You know, when it comes to horror movies, there have been loads of iconic monsters that have left an impact over the years. In the 1930s and 40s, you had, of course, King Kong, and then you get guys like Dracula, Frankenstein's monster, and the Wolfman. Later on in the 50s, you'd get Creature from the Black Lagoon, and of course, we can't forget Godzilla. And eventually, they'd all be joined alongside later characters from the slasher genre. But there's something about today's monster that kind of fits in between all of those things. And the franchise it spawned has gone on to become one of the most recognizable and scary science fiction series of like all time bar none. With a reputation so unavoidably massive that I honestly, I could not wait to talk about it. Alien is a 1979 science fiction horror movie directed by Ridley Scott. It stars Sigourney Weaver, Yafet Koto, and Ian Holm, amongst many others. The movie revolves around the slow, methodical process of a foreign creature hiding inside of a ship and taking out the members of the vessel one by one each time revealing itself to be more formidable compared to the last, which makes for one seriously scary and in my opinion, overlooked experience, at least in the modern day context. We all take this movie for granted now, but when it came out, this whole thing was about a creature. It's just about the monster that would continuously change into different things. It would adapt and attack in variously weird ways with seemingly no real end. And in the modern context of pretty much what everyone would begin to describe this franchise as, it would just, it would be different completely after the sequels. So the plot takes place in the distant future, where a crew of the ship known as the Nostromo receives a message from a derelict spacecraft on a planet called LV-426. The company in charge of the Nostromo told it to go out and see what they can find before docking back home. And after landing on the planet, a very bad series of events followed the crew until only a handful of survivors remain. This is, this is a dark one, man, and there's a lot to talk about. You still don't understand what you're dealing with, do you? Perfect. Well, guys. Now, what I think makes Alien such an effective horror film is really the tone. The atmosphere of having a movie set out in the deep vastness of space is it's really powerful here and with a tagline like in space no one can hear you scream you immediately know what kind of movie they're trying to sell you. But it's not just the cold vacuum of space that's the problem here. It's the unknown monster that comes from some sort of other alien life form spaceship that it really opens the mind up for scary interpretation. The way we're introduced to the eggs of the aliens is through a thin layer of mist that seems to somehow be stopping the monsters from jumping out of the eggs or doing anything unless you break the layer of mist, which it just asked the question, like, what was going on with the ship? What, what is this? What was it designed for? And who is this dead pilot alien known only as the space jockey who seems to be behind all of this? What was he flying the ship for? I mean, it's, it's very interesting. Alien raises those questions quickly, all while being a pretty relatable story about a bunch of workers that are just trying to get home and get back to everyday life. It may be hard to remember how exactly Ridley Scott set all this stuff up, but I think the decision to not really focus on one sole person as the genuine protagonist in the first act helps create this layer of believability and tension with the crew that really helps sell the story. We all know today that Alien is a Sigourney Weaver franchise, that Ripley is the lead at the center of everything for those movies, but in 1979 with the first movie, Movie, it's cool to see how the plot actually relies on the audience not knowing who the survivors are really going to be, with the narrative even framing Ripley early on in something of a negative light for following through with company protocol and not allowing her fellow crew back on the ship. It feels like something you would go through at a normal big company job, and the way everybody talks to each other, vulgarity and all, I mean, it it's very realistic and it makes you really stop and think, okay, this is like a real situation somebody at a real job would find themselves in. Which leads me to talk about the actual tension that starts to build an alien. After a while, it becomes clear that the crew can't agree on much of anything, but that's also a problem because of what they're arguing about, which is how to handle this foreign thing stuck on the ship. It's, it's equally mysterious and terrifying. Seriously, without the tone Ridley Scott establishes early on in this movie, you don't get the buildup and suspense of what's going on for the rest of the film. An alien, it just knocks all that stuff out of the park 
ASAP. There's a lot of just cold, no music, walking through corridors of the ship, vacuum of we don't know where it is. It keeps having these new abilities like acid for blood so that nothing can try to kill it or it will also be killed. Uh, it morphs into different various forms and a lot of people are keeping secrets from one another. It's a very paranoid sort of a movie, but it works so well. You know, usually on my channel, I get to talk about lesser known movies that aren't actually, they're not exactly the greatest. So to go back and look at a bona fide classic like this, it's really fun for me because you can see how impactful a movie like Alien had to be for so many other stories to have either drawn inspiration from it or just flat out tried to copy it completely. And that's part of why Alien really is one of the greatest monster movies ever made. And speaking of monsters... Three minutes. You can't make a great movie about a monster if the creature you're working on isn't that scary. And Alien is a really iconic piece of film history for its lead villain alone. H.R. Giger, who we've already talked about in my review of Species, did his most legendary work here. It's probably the thing he is the most well known for. This creature would later go on to be known as a xenomorph, a parasitic alien creature that starts off as a simple egg before jumping out of its pod as a weird crab thing, later evolves evolving into an eerie snake and then growing full size into a demonic velociraptor adjacent thing. And it's psychologically strange with the way he contorted the different body parts on this bioengineered mechanical creature. And look, I know that in later movies, they explain the life cycle and motivations of the creature more. But for this video, I want to focus on the 1979 film alone because what's presented here and, and here by itself is really what made the impact that it did all those years ago and what they were working with is honestly insanely original and cool. The way the alien gestates and the way it kind of uses you as a host and bursts out of you, it's creepy. It's an allegory for the most violative sort of act that you could possibly imagine. And the design is, it's alien, it's scary. It's like a vampire story in outer space to some degree. Uh, it's, it's wild, man. <laughs> Everyone and their mother, no matter who they are, will tell you that if you've never seen Alien before or know next to nothing about it, the movie has one specific scene that scares the heck out of anyone who goes in blind. I know that modern day audiences know all about the chest burster and how it works, but just think back to the 70s and imagine seeing this group of people eating alone at a big table, someone starts choking, and then this wild and crazy event happens. The first time I saw it was when I was 13, and even after all already knowing about what the aliens were and how they operated, it was extremely memorable to me. I can remember thinking like, what did people think when this movie came out in theaters? Like this is just beyond <laughs> crazy. And that's because one of the things that Ridley Scott delivered extremely well with the first alien was that sense of unknown terror and threatening atmosphere that keeps you on your toes throughout pretty much the whole runtime. That scene alone is really memorable for being such an ingenious plot twist and what to look out for going forward. But there's actually another moment where a different character turns out being uh, not exactly what they seem that also made me jump upon my first viewing. That was actually the big twist for me. I knew nothing about the plot twist involving one of the crew members, if you guys know what I mean. And when that happened, wow, I, uh, I was not anticipating any of that. And it's another reason why Alien works so well well. It is, it's just a movie that keeps you on your toes and is super fun at it. The movie introduces a lot of cool curveballs throughout its story that are brought to life by every aspect of the filmmaking team working as hard as they can, and it really does show in the final product. When you want to look back at Alien, the original Alien from 1979, and talk about why this movie is good and why new people should see it, I really think it's more than just saying, oh, you know, it's Alien, everyone knows Alien, it's a classic, go watch it, because this is a project that not only created an incredibly recognizable monster, but the story involving that monster had its horror built up through a number of excellently done plot twists. The characters were all engaging and believable people that you start to care about, and the iconic status of the scenes that Ridley Scott actually shot in this movie work so well because of the expert level craft that went into what has become well known to be this, this just near perfect science fiction movie. It really isn't just one specific thing that makes people fans of the Alien film, and once you really take the time to go over what kind of project this was and how it was 
executed, it's no brainer really as to why so many people like it. So look, when you go back and check out how the actual genesis of the movie and how the writer Dan O'Bannon started off doing a more comedic project with John Carpenter called Dark Star, Ron Cobb would uh, put together some great set design and concept art before H.R. Giger came on to design the monster itself. All these guys, you know, all these people coming together, it all just falls together perfectly for some reason. They took ideas from The Thing from Another World, Forbidden Planet, and even presented the script as Jaws in Space. The movie, it just kind of evolved into what it is perfectly out of all of these cool ideas. And you can really see that the set design alone, Alien looks incredible and Ron Cobb would go on to do a lot of the stuff in Conan the Barbarian that movie with Arnold that I've talked about a lot and I don't know it, there's something about Alien it's always described as just like a haunted house story in space but there's so much more to it and you can't not talk about the movie without talking about Sigourney Weaver's performance as Ripley I don't know she's she's just perfect in the movie she's relatable she's kind of got this grit about her but not, not extremely you know as much as the other sequels would at the end of everything Ripley kind of just comes through as just she's just cool I, I can't explain it further without going into deep spoilers, which is one of the reasons why when I went back to the release of the film, it shocked me because when Alien came out, it was actually met with some mixed reviews where people thought it was just a slickly made production with a bunch of empty value. It's funny to look back at and even see people like Leonard Malton complain about the film. Meanwhile, Siskel and Ebert were both like, I don't know, we thought it was pretty good. They gave it like thumbs up, I guess. It's a combination of some of the best space hardware since Star Wars and the most gruesome bug-eyed monster since the creature from the Black Lagoon. But look, at the time, it was just, I guess it was just a little too weird for some people. It was very innovative and dark and kind of surreal. It's its almost a borderline art house movie. And uh, yeah, I, it really caught people off guard. It became a box office success and uh, it'd go on to win the Academy Award, believe it or not, for best visual effects. Even after that really bad shot of the suit bouncing around the hole at the end of the escape pod. <laughs> but I mean, I'm picking on the movie. A lot of it does look really, really good, especially for the time. Sigourney Weaver went on to become a science fiction legend. I, I want to talk about her in this review, but because Alien plays out the way it does and Ripley is is kind of like an unlikely survivor. I can't really go into too much of it before I get into the other movies. Ridley Scott wound up making a ton of iconic movies after this, and the formula of Alien would spawn a whole bunch of imitators and sequels. So if you're a science fiction fan or just someone who likes creature design in general, you should really check this movie out as soon as you can. You've probably already seen it, but I want to make sure I'm not spoiling much. I'm sure most of you love the first Alien. It's the kind of movie that really catapulted a whole genre into existence. I've done so many videos on my channel about the films that were inspired by this particular classic, whether it be Leviathan, Creature, or a certain John Carpenter movie that I plan on talking about soon. That also reminds me of the Xenomorph's arch nemesis, uh, the John Carpenter one. It reminds me of The Predator, which we'll get into later. So with all that being said, guys, those are all just my own thoughts on the subject matter. What do you think? What's your favorite scene in the first Alien? And how do you feel about the original movie? movie. I personally still love it, and in my opinion, it's actually leagues better than the director's cut that came out in 2003. I don't know why, but I just think the 79 cut is better in every way imaginable. It's, it's something about the original cut of the movie. It's great. If you've never seen the director's cut, you can watch it. I mean, it's just not... I'm, I'm a fan of the classic, but hey, whatever your own thoughts and opinions happen to be, I'd love to hear all about them in the comments down below. <laughs> Let me tell you something, brother. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I really appreciate it. And if you'd like to see more, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you can be updated when I put out new videos. God bless you all. Christ is King. I hope you all enjoyed your time. And as always, take it easy.